point, I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. And I may have asked you this before. Have you ever read the Monopoly instructions? No, that that is a very specific ask. But no, I have never read the actual well, Monopoly instructions. So where do we really get introduced to home ownership outside of television and not ha in absent examples? Monopoly. It teaches you the game of capitalism and the game of That's America. right. That's right. And you've always been told how to play. But privilege is being, and look, now I've got props. Privilege is being able to hold these instructions. There you go. <laughs> and, and, but seriously, it just, it, it, drastic, <laughs> it drastically changed my mind recently. And I'm not going to go into the directions or instructions, but just even that about what does it look like for home ownership as a vehicle of wealth building? And, you know, got my little slab of land, want to buy more. I'm really interested in being, this is a shout out to Jeanette in this moment. I'm really interested in mm -hmm. being a land baron soon, as Jeanette calls mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so be, instead of a landlord, a land baron, uh, it's just, I'm, I'm excited about that one day soon, hopefully. That's on my plans for this year. But I got out here and just bought a slab of concrete. And to me, it feels great because yeah. it feels like what I grew up around is more than I've ever had. And yeah, just so t talk a little more about what it, what the home you grew up in was like. Man, I mean, it was it was tight. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was. You said it like was, seven, eight people at a given time. At any given time, I mean, yeah, at least, at least yes, at least six to seven at any given time. My grandparents, my cousin, my aunt, um, my uncle was away at college. You know, so when he'd come back, uh, my other uncle. You know what I'm saying? So like it would be mm -hmm. it would be tight at any one time. Uh, the bathroom. And that's was probably, a thing too. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say the bathroom was probably the most like coveted space, you know, um, <laughs> because it was only, there was only one bathroom. I, I remember when I moved to Maryland because that was, that was my, that was like the progress, right? Was, was my, uh, my, my dad, my stepdad and my mom bought a townhome in Maryland, no backyard, no mm -hmm. front yard, um, connected to other houses, obviously. And, um, we had two bathrooms and that for me was wild. I was like, dang, mm -hmm. like I never have to wait to use the bathroom. Like this is just like an embarrassment of riches, right? My standard was just so, <laughs> cause what I come from, I come from a bunch of people being in the house. It was just the three of us in this town home, this three bedroom, two bathroom town home. And that for me was like, oh, we are like really out here living. And Stu um, has three full bathrooms in his home right now. I do. I do. Yeah, I do. Like, and, yeah, and, and, and that is good, just, man. we're just moving, moving the ball down the field, man. Um, but yeah, it was tight any one time. Um, I loved where we lived because we lived close to a park. So even though we didn't have a backyard mm -hmm. or a front yard, I could walk to Tilden Park and, and blow off steam and have that space and, and actually like be on some land and, and it's concrete. But, you know, even still, um, that for me was a, was an added benefit considering we didn't have that space. Yeah, when we were in Brooklyn, kind of just connecting on the park thing, we were maybe six blocks down Eastern Parkway from Prospect Park. But it's yep. not the same thing as actually that, that was a real, grass, right? real actual park, yeah. like with like grass. But, <laughs> right. And sure, that's fun. But really, when we're playing ball or something, we're playing on the, the milk crate tacked to the tree right. outside of the, the apartment building. Same. So it wasn't really, same. you know, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, at risk of going on the service lane and getting hit in the street. My friend Chris actually got hit in the street one day, like just, just you know, and I don't want to paint this oh, dangerous, wow. super gritty depiction of Brooklyn. It's, it's just, you know, these things just happen. <laughs> type of thing. Like back in my day, <laughs> things happen. But man, you know, even the, just to have that space again, right? And especially a thing that came up for me is when you talk about when uncles would come from college or XYZ, the black home and a house is not a home to quote Luther, right? So it doesn't have go. to be a house to be a home. But yeah. feeling at home for black folks and back to that idea of safety, often anyone in your family having a house and it's often not a lot of people or a place that feels mm -hmm. like home is so critical because you have folks in our community where there's often often transients for lack of better term yeah so yeah. like and in, in your example it's just hey i'm i'm coming home from college it's a different thing and, and the house expands a bit but in mine it was so and so's back from jail so and so's down on hard luck mm -hmm. such and such and they mm -hmm. can all stay at grandma's house so yeah and it I wasn't mean, a house it was, it was the an same. apartment it was yeah. the same Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No question. Like everybody that came from Ghana to the States lived in this building. Um, I mm -hmm. should say that growing up, um, my grandfather uh, rented out the apartment to my father and my mother, uh, which mm -hmm. is a downstairs apartment. That was the apartment mm -hmm. that I grew up in. Right. So it was very much so the jumping off point for anyone that came from Ghana. It's like, look, we got you. We'll set you up here. So, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's exactly what you said.